Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this morning's Reddit rant. This is Nathan Lindorf with the Rational Independent. Today, we are digging into an article from The Hill. Frost on DeSantis targeting black LGBTQ transgender people, quote, it's fascism, unquote. Here's a pretty spicy headline. So let's take a look at it. Uh, as we look at this article, we see that it looks like there's a congressional representative out of Florida, a Democrat, who was interviewed on Sunday, and he's talking about Ron DeSantis. And it's interesting because immediately we begin conflating different things. So it's talking about Ron DeSantis's drumbeat of policies targeting black, transgender, and LGBTQ people as fascism. However, this is the Florida legislative session, emphasis on legislative, which means that the policies, the legislation that's being proposed is from a different branch of government, not the governor's office. Now, whether or not Ron DeSantis supports this, it's a conflation of how this process works to say basically that the acts of the legislature are Ron DeSantis's fault. Now, I guess this uh, Representative Frost, I've never heard of him before, is the first Gen Z representative in Congress. Okay, I guess that's special. Everyone needs a first. To fairly represent what's going on here, I do want to quote what's in the article, what's said by this con congressional representative. He says, this is what we're up against in Florida right now. And it's hard to keep track of because it seems like there's a new victim. There's a new bill every day but we have to call it for what it is. He is abusing his power and using the state to target political opponents and political enemies. There's a word for that. It's fascism and we have to be honest about it. So that's a strong allegation because fascism is a problem. We should probably at some point do a deep dive about some of the broad collectivist authoritarian governments and what they actually are as opposed to what people think they are. Uh, as a quick aside, I was watching, a, I was listening to a radio program that's no longer on the air, but for years, they would call people at convenience stores once a week, and they would ask them trivia questions. And one of the recurring trivia questions that they would ask, and again, they're just trying to get an everyday person, someone sitting in a convenience store with a little bit of time to kill, not Mensa members, not, but not bums on the street either. These are hardworking people probably not a lot of education, but kind of an interesting way of kind of a man on the street approach, but over the phone. They would ask them, what is socialism? And they never got a right answer. I think they asked the question for like five or six years straight and they never, they never got a correct answer. Everyone had, you know, they, they, they'd answer. But it was like, you know, when you socialize together, when you get together, you know, when you have a party or when you never, not even close. There's a real problem in our society where people use these labels and these terms and they don't always mean what they think it means. But here we have, can we call this the F word? Sure, why not? We have fascism. Fascism is essentially state controlled capital. The idea is you still have private ownership of the means of production, but it is directed by the will of the state. Now, that kind of top-down authoritarian government is very problematic, and it leads to all sorts of weirdness and all sorts of problems, and usually death and destruction on a broad scale. So this is a serious accusation. And he's saying that Governor DeSantis is using the power of the state to, to target a political enemy or political opponent, okay? If that's the case, that's a problem. But when I hear that, what I envision, just as a reader, not I don't live in Florida, I don't know the details, what I envision in order to make that kind of accusation is behavior where the governor is using the executive branch to harass his political opponents. So if there's a lobbyist pushing against his you know, favorite legislation, maybe he has you know, if that lobbyist runs a business, maybe he has some of the local regulatory agencies that answer to the governor's office, go and audit that business. Maybe he has police officers tail him, look for trouble, dig through his trash, perform illegal wiretaps, et cetera, et cetera. To me, that is 
what I envision when you're using the power of the state to target a political opponent. You are using the legitimate functions of government for your own personal political favor. And that's corruption and that's bad. Now that we've kind of, that, that's my, that's what I'm expecting to hear when I read this article. When I see that headline and when I see this quote, I say, okay, these are strong allegations. Please provide some evidence. According to the Washington Post, Republican lawmakers, now see how the conflation right from the beginning messes things up. We're saying Governor DeSantis is being a fascist, but it's a legislative session, which means it's the lawmakers doing stuff, meaning the legislature. And here, when we provide evidence of the accusation against Ron DeSantis, we're discussing actions of the legislature. A proposed a new batch of legislation that includes, and I'm assuming they're headlining their most damaging claims here. That's what I would do. They're probably not digging around the edges. Proposals to require teachers to use pronouns matching children's sex as assigned at birth, establish a universal school voucher program. Oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah, those are their top examples of the misbehavior in Florida. So pronouns equals fascism? Weird. A universal school voucher program. Let's see, why would that be fascism? So right now the state provides education services directly. The state controls those institutions and funds those institutions and controls the lives of the children in those institutions, uh, decides the curriculum that they're presented with, what foods they get to eat while they're in that schooling, and all of that directly under the government's control. And a school voucher program says, we'll give you the option as a parent to opt out of the state system and take the funds that we would have given a state institution and use those funds to pursue an alternate form of education for your child. I really struggle to see how that's fascism. That kind of feels like the opposite of fascism. That feels like the government relinquishing a measure of control. I mean, you can comment if you want, or maybe I'm missing something, but to me, that's not evidence. Ron DeSantis also signed the Parental Rights Education Bill. Hey, they actually put the real name on it. Also referred to as the Don't Say Gay Bill. There it is. We were almost reporting, um, but it, what are you gonna do? Which prohibits state educators from talking about sexual orientation or gender identity in schools. And again, with reporting, every word is chosen specifically. It has a reason. And the words that are omitted are omitted for a reason. Here, yes, it, it the bill addresses discussions of sexual orientation or gender identity in schools. But what it actually says is kids third grade and under are affected by this. And it discusses broadly speaking what topics are appropriate and not appropriate to discuss with kids eight and under. Technically it's correct, but it also leaves out some context that makes it more clear, that makes the legislation seem more reasonable, since it's important for the narrative that we make this legislation seem as unreasonable as possible. We need to misapply a name to it that doesn't really reflect it, and then we need to obscure the fact that it only relates to younger children. And the government governor sparked criticism earlier this year after he barred the teaching of an AP African-American studies course in the state school curriculum. Hey, at last, a direct executive action. Maybe this is the fascism that we're looking for. So he's barring an AP American studies course. He wants it out of the curriculum. Conveniently left to the side of this particular commentary is that, it's the, uh, is that this AP course also teaches critical race theory, CRT. Critical race theory is exceptionally problematic, especially when espoused directly by a government school. It teaches primarily this idea of intersectionalism, this idea of identity politics, this idea of enforced equity, which is the equality of outcome. All of these things, if enforced as policy by the government, creates tyranny. There's no other outcome. What you have is this fascist governor opposing a curriculum that supports a tyrannical authoritarian government. 
Again, I, I, that feels like the opposite of fascism. I want to give everyone the benefit of the doubt, and I appreciate this is an elected representative, so he gets to say whatever he wants to say, and he has a measure of credibility because he got elected. But fascism is a serious concern. We do have elements of fascism in our government today. That's something that bears talking about. I don't see it here. And the problem is that teaches people to either A, misunderstand what fascism is, or B, dismiss it as not a credible threat. And it is a credible th threat to America, to our representative republic. It is real. It's not here, but it is real. And it's important that we understand what it is and watch for the warning signs or else we will eventually fall. We're gonna go ahead and I will add one more quote from this representative. Again, I wanna just give him, give him the floor. Let's see if he can make his case. We need everybody to pay attention and talk about how he's targeting trans folks, targeting not just black history, but black people in general, which is American history and targeting marginalized communities across this entire state. Okay, so we're using this language, targeting political opponents. It's actually probably a pretty smart choice from an agitating representative, from a reporter who wants to push forth a narrative, because it's one of those words that is fraught with implication, but it doesn't actually mean, its, it's meaning is not specific enough that it kind of means what you want it to mean. So as someone not very sympathetic to this person's position. I hear targeting and I think, yeah, he's focusing conversation and discussion and legislative priorities on the issues being espoused by these people he disagrees with. That's discourse, that's free speech, that's political exercise of power, that's all legitimate. But someone who is more sympathetic to this sees the big, powerful, evil white man is targeting for destruction. You know, he set his sights on us and he wants to destroy us. Because when you target something in a military context, it means that you want to destroy that thing that you're targeting. And in this way, this statement can mean multiple things to multiple types of people, which enables some people to dismiss it as inflammatory rhetoric, which is where I would lean, and other people to view it as a way to reinforce their mindset, this narrative of what the world is building towards, what this evil white man is responsible for. And that's where I want to kind of end today's analysis uh, with, we'll just call it my two cents um, as we end out this Reddit rant. My two cents is this. If you try and solve cultural and religious problems at the legislative political level, you are going to end up building a society that is tyrannical in nature. That is, that's the inevitable result of that effort. It's true that there are bad things in America. They need to be fixed. They need to be addressed. But if you try and employ the government to solve these problems, you are going to create, you're gonna magnify the problem, not fix it. You're gonna create a wildfire of problems around this problem, not calm it. As a perfect case in point, there are bad people who are in the role of police officer and they do bad things. But if you quote unquote defund the police because you want to reduce the power of these bad people from doing bad things. You also disempower the good police officers who are doing good things in keeping society ordered and organized and lawful. When you do that, you have now taken what was a small problem and you've made it bigger because you've actually disincentivized good cops and they leave. And then you backfill those positions with lower quality applicants people more susceptible to corruption, people less skilled to do this difficult job. And you then put them out into a society that is imp where the, the misbehaving people, the anarchy led criminals and whatnot have been emboldened by the lack of policing. And we end up in a position where now the job is harder because society is less lawful by its own choice. And it's harder because the police officers doing that work are less skilled. So in an attempt to make society better, you actually made it worse. And that's kind of the crux of this. We can talk about what's right and what's wrong in our society, and that's good to do. But we have to be far more rigorous in what we choose to deploy as solutions to these problems. Because if we choose the wrong solution, we can take the existing problem, make it worse, and even make 
more problems beyond that. That's my two cents. All right, that's today's Reddit rant. Thank you everyone for your time and your attention. Let me know what you think in the comments. Throw me a like, a subscribe, any of the good stuff, push all the button buttons and good luck out there.